Welcome to another edition of Discover Tinley, where we highlight people and organizations of Tinley Park that make our town a great place in which to live. And as we all know, Tinley Park is a very great place in which to live. Hope you're all enjoying it. Uh, and the biggest thing is May, spring is coming. Uh, the biggest thing is spring training is coming, is here. So uh, we know spring is coming and the weather will be, get, be getting better. Thank goodness, right, after this winter time here. Uh, a lot of things happening. Uh, the biggest thing I want to mainly push is that Discover Tinley's coming up on April 8th. So make sure you all get out to that over at the convention center on April 8th. And as usual, the, the Discover Tinley is also brought to you by the same people that bring you Discover Tinley TV, the Community Resources Commission. It's a volunteer commission in town where we have people in town, plus our actual, our additional high school, college, and adult volunteers with a lot of volunteer efforts going on with Discover Tinley. Uh, speaking of volunteers, our first guest, I thought we'd uh, we start highlighting people in town who've been a volunteer for quite a while. We've got quite a few people who have been, uh, been in Tinley Park for a number of years and have devoted a good part of their life to helping out all kinds of organizations in Tinley Park. And I thought tonight we'd start, start with Andy. I've known for, what, about 40 or 50 years or something yeah. like that? Uh, for a long time since I worked at Tinley Park High School. Ed Barda. Ed, thanks for coming to Discover Tinley. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, first met you uh, when I worked at Tinley Park High School, and you were... What, President what? of the Booster Club. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> oh, yeah? Now, when did you first come to Tinley Park? When did uh, you... 1963. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah. And, and where did you come from? And... I came from uh, Cicero, actually, in Chicago, but Cicero. Cicero on 135th Street. Okay. And the reason I moved out here was uh, my sister uh, moved into Tinley on uh, the west side of Harlem. Okay. And... Uh, we decided to come out and take a look, and uh, we enjoyed the, the area, so we bought. And in fact, Tinley Park ended right in the middle of my street at 177th Street. Oh, my. That was the end of Tinley. Oh. And Harlem Avenue didn't go through. Okay. All right. And uh, we bought a home there, and uh, right after I moved out here, uh, my father's cousin, found out I moved, so he called me and asked me if I would volunteer for the Fall Festival Parade. And I said, okay, and I was in it, and now I was a volunteer from that time on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Since 63, 64? Yes, yeah, yeah, oh 54 goodness. years, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that Fall Festival, that was, I know, remember, that was the first thing I saw when I came to Tinley Park, that Fall Festival. Yeah. And that was a quite a quite a thing, quite a thing going on yeah. at Tinley Park at the time. And you were part of that, right? Yes, and I was president of it for one year, too. Okay. And uh, that, uh, I became um, a citizen of the year. In uh, 1980, they uh, gave me that honor, and yeah. then I was civic leader in uh, 84. And uh, my wife and me uh, being involved with the Booster Club, why we g each got awards uh, from them in 80 and uh, 84 and 85. Wow. And uh, but uh, yeah, and I've been involved in uh, the church. Uh, my <laughs> 
for 30 years. Okay. One day they asked me to help them with the... Uh, now, which church? Oh, St. George. Okay. Yeah, St. George Church. They uh, asked if I would uh, help uh, collect, and I said, okay. And from that time on, I've been collecting for 30 years. Oh, my. And my wife just recently here joined me for the last three, four years, uh, where she's an usher with me at 1130. Okay. But uh, I'm not Catholic. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> and you help out at a Catholic I church for 30 out. years. Yes, yes, That's yes. the ultimate in volunteering. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh earlier, I was uh, president of the band parents for Central, uh, okay. and we sent the kids to Florida. Oh, wow. Uh, that was the JC's convention. Oh. And... Uh, we sent them there, and uh, they were outstanding. They got awards, too. Wow. Yeah, but, Central uh, always had a real good band oh, program. Yeah, over yeah there. that yeah. was Beckman. Was, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was the band leader, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think... You were head of the Boosters Club for the band, then, right? For what? Yes, yes, I was okay. president then. Okay, okay. And then I was... Uh, when I was uh, president of the Booster Club in the high school, I also was... Started up uh, the gymnast gymnastics parents club. Started that up too. Okay. And uh, but uh, when you know, we did a lot of things for the school, and that's main. Mm -hmm. That's mainly what I did it for the kids, my okay. kids, and then all the youth in Tinley. I was going to ask you why did you do all this? Yeah, <laughs> I I didn't do it for these awards because no. I never knew I was going to get anything. Right. <laughs> Right. It, it was it was great though. I, uh, Let's talk about one day ago when that Tinley at that high school and I was there. What did you do? Let's talk about what you did for the baseball team. I was on the baseball well, team there. Uh, you did a couple of neat things for the baseball team. Well, the the baseball though, I wasn't present for the dugouts. That was okay. uh, Arnie Gunther. Oh, that's but, right. That's right. But I was uh, involved in it. You right, know, right, I was right. on the call, and uh, we built the dugouts. But then when I became president. I had the football field crowned. Oh, wow. We crowned the football field. Okay. And I had uh, civil offense with their light uh, truck out there oh, so we could finish it all in one day. Oh, jeez. Laying all that sod. And, uh, oh, my goodness. That's yeah, a lot of work. I, yeah, I'll never forget the dugout thing. Uh, you guys came over and oh, and all volunteer laborers. All, all, everybody. Uh, putting brick in layers. The brick layers and, and everything and put up the couple of really nice dugouts yeah, that I think I are still there to this day. Yes. And uh, you helped out putting those things up for us. Yeah. And you got us equipment for the baseball team, too. Yes, definitely. So yeah. The, yeah, we had... Uh, well, the pitching machine was one of the okay. things you came to us okay. for. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, we uh, uh, got uh, enough of money to to get the pitching machine. Plus, we got the uh, the chess team their first um, uh, trophy that's case. That's right. You're, yeah, I the forgot first about that. Trophy right. case. Yeah, I was yeah. the chess team coach, and uh, that's right. That's right. You forgot it. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah you guys did a lot. You. Yeah, you guys. Did and then we ran that uh, the. Uh, what they call it, youth wrestling uh, tournament. Okay. That's a big tournament. It yeah. goes for two days, and we ran that. Okay. The Halloween, always, uh, you know. Okay. Well, speaking of volunteers, <laughs> you ask uh, a senior citizen to help you out, and you say, hey, we need 10 people to help us. Oh, okay. 25, 30 people show up. <laughs> And you couldn't say, well, we don't need you. Right, you right, 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 right. <laughs> but that was the same way with the fall festival. Oh, yeah. We would get them to help out in the trailers with the uh, jars, you know, okay. pulling out tickets. And you got twice as many as you asked for. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, back then there would be a lot of people oh, volunteered. Oh, back then uh, volunteers were all over. And now, yeah, yeah it seems it's to kinda be... It's kind of gone down a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah a little yeah, bit. I yeah, think yeah. it's gone down a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. It's changed a bit. And then you... Uh, now, Fall Festival, again, for people who don't know, that was just that was over in, in the Volt Woods area, right? Or where was that at? Well, when I was... Yeah, we were at the Ike Turner uh, property. Oh, Okay, when I was. Okay. But we had it at Bulldogs. Bulldogs that was yeah, the yeah, right, first right, earliest right, one. Right, right. Then we had it on Harlem Avenue. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, then, of course, the, the last was over at the 
center of the convention, not convention. Well, that's I'm telling you, that not, that's the Oktoberfest now. We're going yeah, out. Yeah, that's we're going the out. October I was going to ask you about October. You were involved in Oktoberfest too, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, just for that though, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, just helping out over there. But uh, you know. But yeah, I uh, I enjoyed uh, doing it. And, and why uh, yeah, why did you keep doing it? What what made you keep getting involved? I mean, that's a lot of work, extra work. I'm sure you were well, working all the time. And yeah, all that I stuff. was working, but still, uh, I don't know. I I just for the youth at Tinley, I uh, I just enjoyed it. Okay. You know? and then of course Mayor Zabraki uh, asked me to be on the zoning board. Okay. And I went. To the zoning board, and that's what I got here. The last thing is, twenty-one years of service on the zoning board. Okay. Yeah, but, you just got uh, that certificate this past. Uh, yeah, I just got that. Okay. We'll take a look at that certificate, certificate of, of recognition on behalf of the city yeah. of Tinley Park, Ed Barta, and recognition of twenty-one years of dedicated service to the village of Tinley Park Zoning Board of Appeals Commission. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yes. Now, what, now, what did you do on the board, zoning board? What was that all about? Well, that's when, uh, <clears throat> well, it was mainly fences and garages. Okay. You know, if somebody wants to put up a fence, you had okay. certain rules to follow. Okay. And uh, we'd have to go out and look at the property, and uh, no matter where it was, you mm -hmm. drove and in the winter, in okay. the summer, okay. <laughs> you know, in the rain. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was nice, too, and... Uh, I just uh, couldn't take it anymore. I had to quit last year because of my legs okay. and other issues. That's all right. And you've been on uh, elections in Tinley Park. You've done a lot on these. Oh, I was on the election board uh, uh, when Zabraki was, and uh, I helped out in all all of the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that the village put up. In fact, I wish I could help. Dave Seaman. Okay. But I can't, and okay, yeah, I, yeah, he knows yeah. about it, you know. But, yeah, all that stuff that requires just volunteer efforts. Nobody gets right. paid to do that kind of stuff. No. And, uh, Go out, and... put up signs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sunk in mud. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Tell uh, us about your family, too, now. What, what, who is your, what's your family like? Well, my wife, Patricia, she's fantastic. Uh, we'll be married 60 years this August. Oh, no. Yes. I have three daughters, uh, Teresa, Karen, and Mary. Uh, they all married their high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, Zaplatash, uh, McMahons, and uh, um, Schistlers. Oh, all names families. Sound, names sound familiar. All right? families oh, that man. lived in Tinley. Wow. Yeah. And I have uh, eight uh grandchildren and six great-grandchildren wow and they're all doing fine they're doing fine yes well everybody. because they had good parents <laughs> you Hopefully. guys you guys did knock, on wood. knock on wood oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's fantastic how much uh, you did do all that time and uh, people need to understand that uh, volunteer work is not easy uh, it's, it takes a lot no, of time away it, from family yeah, it uh, well like even uh, when i we sent uh, our daughter to uh, uh Florida for that uh, JC convention, we couldn't go because our uh, youngest daughter was oh. ill at the time. So oh we did all the stuff and then we couldn't go oh. if we had other people go, you know, in our oh place. So, but right. uh, it was, it was for them anyways. Okay. It wasn't for me. Right, so, right. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you so much for you and Pat and uh, family for doing all you've done for Tinley Park. Uh, I hope you're an example for others to follow. Uh, I hope so. There's a few others, but uh, you oh know, yeah, there's yeah. you know a lot of them, and yeah, I yeah, know yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're still out there. Yes, yes, yes. they're still going there. Well, keep up the good work. Hope the uh, your health uh, keeps getting a little better, and yeah, I hope so a little too. Better and uh, keep going. Uh, but you uh, you deserve a lot of credit for all the work you did do. For well. thanks for for helping out Tinley Park and volunteering all these years. I thank you for having me, Ed Barda. Ed and Pat Barda, volunteers extraordinaire of Tinley Park. Well, it's kind of interesting talking with Ed Barda, and like I said, I've known him for a good number of years, and he and his wife uh, have done a tremendous job volunteering in, in town here with a lot of different things. And hopefully uh, we'll be doing some more people with, in Tinley Park over the years uh, who've done a lot of uh, volunteering in town here to make Tinley Park, like we said, a great place in which to live. 
Uh, I thought our next guest, I uh, thought this time of year it might be good to find out how do we get our yards and grounds ready for springtime. Uh, spring is coming, right? Uh, and we got to get things ready. And I thought it'd be kind of neat to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing about landscaping and planting and everything like that. And somebody who's been had a business in town here for a long, long time. Uh, Ted's Greenhouse. We have Dan Bernacki from Ted's Greenhouse. Thank you. Man. Thanks for coming to Discover Tinley. Thank you. Yeah, Ted, uh, it's been around since how long? When, when did Ted's Greenhouse first come to Tinley Park? Uh, 1957. Oh, my goodness. So we've been there since then. We're on the original piece of property. Okay. The business has grown from one greenhouse, about 5,000 square feet, to now we have almost two acres of greenhouse yeah. and about two acres of outside fields that we use for outside production. And Ted's still he's, with the business, he's still, still there doing every stuff. Day. <laughs> he still comes in every day. He's 87 this year. Oh, my goodness. So we're, we're proud of that. Oh, my goodness. Well, you guys have been around uh, a long time, and I thought it'd be kind of nice to find out what do we do now to get yards and, and grounds ready for planting now coming up. So month of March, what, what things should we start doing this month to get, get our you know, things ready? We don't want to wait till May or June to get things ready. Do we really we? don't. We want to get started early, uh, look at our plans, draw out our gardens. Uh, we can start checking our, our yards for uh, any kind of damage from animals or rodent damage over the winter time time to cut back your perennials let's talk about that what what should we cut back and what shouldn't we be cutting back well we can cut you can cut back all of your all of your perennials in march okay. except for uh shrubs that would bloom in the spring because those buds are already developed and you don't want to cut them off they're going to they're going to be from last year's buds okay uh, but you can also prune your trees you can still see the can it still see the structure of the tree there's no leaves that mm -hmm. So you can kind of prune out your, your unwanted branches or, or thin them out. And uh, it's a good time to check out your lawn and see what's going on with your lawn, your plan of attack for the year to make sure your lawn will be healthy as well. What kind of things should you do for the lawn to get that ready? You're a big uh, fan of the aeration and all that kind of good stuff? It's a great time to do your core aerating. Okay. No one really thatches anymore because it's, it's just it's too hard on the lawn. So really? core, core, core aerating is, take, is taking the place of that. And uh, getting your early... Uh, your early fertilizers and, and chemicals down. If you're gonna, if you have a problem with crabgrass, mm -hmm. you're gonna want to get that down before we have a week of warm temperatures in the soil. So if the soil is above 60 degrees, it's too late to do crabgrass. So last year it got kind of warm early, and it was really difficult to get the crabgrass timing down. Oh, right. My. So it's best to put that stuff down uh, in March and. This it month? just depends. It's really by the soil temperature. Oh. So you really have to sort of keep an eye on. There's, there's actually. Uh, you can go online and, and check the temperatures in your area and get a pretty good idea where your, where your soil temperature is at. Okay. But you really shouldn't have a big weed problem in your lawn if you're properly fertilizing. If your lawn really is healthy, okay. then you won't have, you really shouldn't have a lot of dandelions or crabgrass because there's really no place for the weeds to grow. Oh yeah. So it's always key to make sure that your your lawn is healthy. It really won't have you won't have to use many get many yeah. chemicals. For some reason last year I had more <coughs> dandelions than usual. I don't know why, but uh, I used the preventive and all that stuff there, but I had more dandelions than usual. Just, yeah, just uh, the biggest thing is to make sure it's well fed. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the core aerating will help if your lawn's older. Mm -hmm. it, get, it gets some air down in the soil and, and gives gives the, uh, the lawn some new places to grow. It really will uh, help your lawn out a lot. And you said the de and I had my lawn dethatched last year. That's not a good thing anymore to no, do. No, it's or? usually pretty hard on the lawn, and oh. it ends up then you have more more spots for the uh, oh. the lawn to uh, create weeds. Also, you could go if you have a really thin lawn, you could go through and slit seed it at that time, okay. and they would and they would go ahead and get get you a, a new start on your lawn okay. without having to redo it completely. Now, what kind of plants uh, should be started? Uh, any, any plants should be started soon now, or uh, when do well, you start looking at plants to put in the ground? If you're going to do an early garden, so if you're thinking about doing onions and radishes and broccoli and cauliflower, those types of things that are cold tolerant, you really want to get started with some small seedlings in March. So if you're going to do your own seeds, you would start in March mm. for a beginning of April planting. Oh, wow. Now, how should you prepare the ground for that? Uh, it would have been nice to have gotten started last <laughs> fall and, and, have it, and have it work then. But really a good a good test of the soil to see if it's really ready to be worked in our heavy clay soils mm -hmm. is just to grab a handful and to squeeze it in your hand. Mm -hmm. And if you let go of it and it stays into a, a really tight ball, it's too wet. If it, if it can be crumbled apart, then you're okay to go ahead and rototill. What kind of stuff do you add, suggest adding to the, the, the garden to get it that um, way? You can always do a, you can add compost or peat moss or coconut fiber, just something to, to break up the... Uh, 
the top layer is going to give you some organic material in the soil. So uh, if, you, if you collect your own leaves and compost those or anything you do in your, in your yard, you can also purchase compost as well. Oh, okay. You do. Okay. And then plantings, flowers, and all that stuff there. When do you start? When do you see, when's the, the idea then start planting flowers? I hear, I hear all kinds of dates. May well, 1st, May 15th, frost, all Well, it really is a frost-free date. Or okay. a, 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 the average one is right around the middle of May, mm. uh, but we still can get, it's just an average, so we can't get a late, a late uh, frost as well. So you really, if you, if you want to get an, like a jump on the season, we always recommend to go ahead and do that cold tolerant planting in April. You can do pansies and, oh. and other plants that would give you early flowering. And then, yeah, what kind of flowers are good in the colder weather? What what kind of flowers? Are um, good pansies there? are the most tolerant. So pansies and violas, those can take the take the really cold weather. Dianthus, we do stocks and ranunculus and oh. uh, a whole host of plants for that really early color in a container, especially, but even in the ground as well. And that'll last through Memorial Day. So if you don't want to, if you want to, you know, deal with all the crowds in the garden center <laughs> at Mother's Day, you plant <laughs> early. Your yard will look amazing in May. And then when you know the crowds die down, then you can go ahead and and, and work on the rest of your yard in, at, at the end of May. And then you're then you're then you're past that cold that potentially cold time mm. when some plants really aren't happy outside. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. The mm. mother's the Mother's Day date can really there's not a lot of plants that like to be out. They might tolerate being there, but they really don't like it. Oh my! So then you end up with a plant that's really not very happy, and when it warms up, it's still sort of not very happy. Where if the if you plant a plant too early. And you plant a plant at the uh, at later date. Mm -hmm. Usually, the later date plant will perform better. better. And we want happy <laughs> plants, right? We do. I want happy plants. Yes, <laughs> happy beautiful plants. Oh my goodness! Uh, and uh, roses. Uh, what? What? What's your? How do you do with the roses? I've got several rose plants there, and I'm always not sure when to trim them and how much and all that kind of stuff. What should we do? There's with roses? lots of different schools of thought, but we don't, never recommend covering with a rose cone because we have so many variable winters so this year is very warm underneath that rose cone it would be almost like a greenhouse so the plant probably right now would be growing and you don't Ooh. really want that uh, and if you pull it off too early then you defeat the purpose if you leave it on too long it, it doesn't really do any good either mm -hmm. so we usually just take, recommend covering with something loose like uh, your evergreen branches or your old tomato vines if they dry out in the winter time and then in the spring right in March you can kind of look at what the plants done if there's a lot of stems that have died back you can remove those areas and leave all the rest. If your plant's really pretty healthy and most of it's there, then you can cut it back to the size you want it to be. Okay. In and March, you can cut that in back? In March, yeah. So if you want it to be a really big rose push, okay. then you can just kind of prune away the dead areas and leave the whole thing there. How far down, <coughs> what's, the, what's the, the, low, the most you should cut off? Probably or? not. You'd want to leave at least six inches. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. okay. Again, you want, you want to have those somewhere for the plant to grow new, new shoots mm -hmm. from. Okay. And all different kinds of roses, that's pretty much the same. That's pretty much the same. If it's, okay. a, if it's a hybrid tea rose, you know, and depending on where you're going to cut, just make sure you don't you cut above the, above the graft. If it's a grafted oh. plant, then Oops. if you, you know, sometimes that, that hybrid tea rose isn't very winter hardy. Oh, it so is? So it's not very oh, winter hardy. Oh, it's not? Hardy. Oh, okay. So your, your, your landscape roses are the ones that are more, much more hardy, but they're on their own roots. Oh. So no matter where the stems come from, they'll be that original plant. Okay. If it's grafted, it's grafted onto a completely different plant that really isn't a blooming plant. It's just for the for the rootstock. So that plant may easily survive when the top won't. So many times the customers say, why is my rose like 10 feet tall but it's not blooming? Oh. Because it's not really the rose you bought. It's just the hardy base that survived. Ooh. Oh, really? <coughs> oh, my goodness. You have okay. to be aware of, aware of where that graft is and, and you know what, what's going on with the plant. Now, I've got these spreading roses. I forget what they call them. They, uh, the big plants... Um, a landscape rose or a shrub rose? Uh, something like that. I forget that. There's a certain, oh, I can't think of the name of it now. but Knockouts? Uh, yeah, knockout. There you go. Knockout roses there. Yeah, those should be trimmed back a lot too? They can They can be. It's just, it's, again, you're sort of in charge of the plant. So if okay. you want to have the plant two to three feet tall and it grows that much in a season, then you okay. want to cut it down most of the way. Okay. If you want it to be a little bit taller, you can leave more of the plant there. It'll, it'll become a bigger plant that year. Okay. So, you really, so you're, you're in charge. Even if the plant says it only gets to be two or three feet tall, mm -hmm. if it's two or three feet tall and you just pr t you know, pinch off the ends of it, it's going to be a lot taller that year you know, than, what, than what it's supposed to be. It's not going to stay that same size. It's going to oh continue my. to grow. Uh, keeping stuff going in the summertime, especially when it's hot. What what do you suggest then? Uh, obviously, watering, Brian. But uh, what, one thing that's always almost always missed is fertilizing. So we oh. try to explain it. 
fertilizer is plant food. Mm. So if you water your plant every day, but you never ever give it any food, <laughs> it's kind of like you just you know bring home a case of water, and that's all you eat all summer is just you know water. So mm -hmm. the plant needs to have food, and it really should be more food as the summer progresses because it's a larger plant. Oh, so a good rule of thumb is just to fertilize it after so many waterings. So if you oh. fertilize it every third watering, mm -hmm. then in the spring it, that might be every two weeks, but then okay. as the summer progresses it might be every third day. Oh, And so that way you keep a steady amount of fertilizer and then you can analyze if it's enough or not, you may have to increase. Any particular kind of food that you should be doing or is there a general stuff that you could be using to feed, feed most anything? Um, well, typically if it's a flowering plant you want to have a higher middle number. Oh. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, but it should be at least be balanced. So mm. it all be all the numbers be the same. Mm. Uh, it's uh, brands don't really aren't that big of an issue in the summertime. So as long as it's just a, you know, the right numbers should be all, all it counts. Mm. Uh, you can use a liquid fertilizer. That's like a IV for plants. So if you put it in the soil, the plant can take it right away. Oh my! Uh, if you use a slow release fertilizer, that's one that's going to release over a, a time period. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier. It's not quite as precise, mm -hmm. but it makes it easier than having to mix it up, you know, every day or whatever oh, yeah, you have yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, organic fertilizers are really difficult in containers mm -hmm. because they are not usable by the plant right away. Oh, they have my. to be somehow transformed in the soil by microorganisms. Ooh. So if you fertilize, with, uh, you know, the, the old adage is you, you fertilize with organic fertilizers for the next year. Oh my. So if you want to fertilize your garden organically, you would do it in like November oh, my. for the next year. Okay, wow. <laughs> Who would so, have thought so of that? So, yeah, so in a container, when you're only in there for a few months. Yeah, it's really yeah. not very, there are some that are, are more, uh, more trans, you know, transferable to the plant mm -hmm. more quickly, or there are, are, are types of, uh, we use a product called uh, EM1, which is a, 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 a mi mi microbial uh, mix Ooh. that helps break the fertilizer down faster. So we do oh. that in our pots for like our herbs that we do organically. Oh my goodness. And you said trees too. Uh, then you pick their way of trimming trees or pretty much get the middle one, the small one, the branches out or? Yeah, it's just sort of, yeah, it's just sort of how uh, everyone has their own preference. So if okay. you want to have nice little round balls, then you would trim them that way. If you want to have more of a natural look, you can just thin out certain branches. Uh, trees should have, a, you know, have the appropriate canopy. How about evergreens? Evergreens should be pruned uh, really a lot. Oh. And, you know, everyone wants to get it big right away. Yeah, yeah. But then if you do that, you only have a few stems to work with. And as you prune the top, you end up with like a broom. Ooh. And that at end is very, very heavy. So if we happen to have a heavy snow, you have one or two branches with a lot of end, ends to them, and they tend to fall apart. Oh so you really, gosh. you know, t again, quality over quantity. If you okay. take your time and prune it every single year, It'll take longer to get bigger, but it'll be a sturdier plant. Good idea. I think I missed, I missed pruned my evergreens <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and some some can be really pruned very very harshly. So like oh, a, yeah. uh, if it's a U, it can be pruned back very very hard. Oh. Okay. And you know you, as long as it's properly taken care of, it will sprout out again. It takes a little longer. Okay. But it would sprout out. So if you have one, it just got you know it hangs over your sidewalk or whatever. You can prune it back pretty hard, and it will come back again. Wow. Well, a lot of good tips. Uh, thank you for doing, telling all this stuff. I learned a few things sure. here. I'm not going to get my yard going this year, but uh, thanks for doing all this stuff and letting us know what to do in Tinley Park uh, to get our plants going. And good luck with your business this year. And uh, hopefully Ted's Greenhouse will, will stay thriving for another 57 years. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Ted, Br uh, Ted Bernanke, the owner, and Dan Bernanke, the son, Ted's Greenhouse. Uh, thanks for watching Discover Tinley. Don't forget, uh, Discover Tinley, April 8th, coming up. All right, we'll see you next month. Uh, thanks for watching.